Doctors and Curious Minds, welcome to the first ever Thinking on Paper book club. We're happy you're here. We're excited you're here. We're probably going to make a mess of this. So give us some time. We'll get better. Book number one, chapter number zero, because obviously this book starts with zero, not one. The Nexus by Julio Otino and Bruce Mao, one of our former guests. You can check out his show. Link will be in the email below. It's called The Nexus, the, Conver the New Convergence of Arc art, technology, and science. I'm going to start by reading the intro to chapter zero. So don't start with chapter one again, chapter zero. When we augment our thinking spaces, we expand our potential for finding creative solutions. But to make creative solutions real through carefully orchestrated execution, we must understand the fabric of complexity that governs how every component of society and the world functions today. Now, that's an intro. So Jeremy, first thoughts on chapter zero of the nexus first of all do you know how we know it's a book club because i've got glasses on that's why that's why we know it's a book club i thought um, you looked smarter i'm trying i've got the gray beard coming back you know yeah. i've got glasses take me seriously now right no th this book comes at a very interesting time uh as as i was telling you about i mean i've always felt like i am what i believe thus far how I read it, that I'm a nexus thinker, right? And nexus thinkers have trouble finding their way in a world that is very single threaded, right? Very specialized. So uh, this comes off I me. Think, I think a lot of our people who are watching this would see themselves as nexus thinkers once they read this book, it, that kind of drive for interdisciplinary thinking across domains. I think a lot of our watchers would label themselves as nexus thinkers. I, I would agree. I would agree. It, it almost like it almost validates how I how I feel and how I connect to the world in in ways that other people think this way. But I was telling you, I, I watched that TED talk that came out not too long ago with uh, David McWilliams. He's an Irish economist, uh, basically talking about the power of unconventional thinking and his idea of like listen to the poets was was this mantra. But one thing I took away is like how the existing system doesn't prepare us for the world we're moving into right so going back to a quote from from the chapter our culture does not does not train people to operate at intersections True. so as i think about that i think about i'm pointing back to mick williams and he talks about the existing the existing education system celebrates or gives us a prize for being walking filing cabinets right memorizing and spitting things out. And yeah. last thing I'll mention about him, because I think it's applicable to this, is that he says smart people sometimes leave school feeling stupid and sometimes stupid people leave school feeling smart. And stupid is a harsh word, but I'm just using the language he put together. But I look at what Julio is doing with this book as a means to go, OK, we have to do better. Here's how we can do better. That's where I start off with this. And that's a very important how to do better because it's not just a a guide to what you can do, it's how you can apply these things in your day to day. I mean, one of the aims of the book is to create more nexus thinkers. It's nexus thinkers in government, nexus thinkers in business, nexus thinking in entertainment. They're very clear that they want more nexus thinkers because, I mean, we haven't really defined what a nexus thinker is, but to solve the the world's complex hyper complex problems climate change being the most obvious to this you need so-called nexus thinkers so what's a nexus thinker jeremy so i think i think it's it's someone that can operate at intersections which i think is a really interesting thing because you have to this is this is from my experience operating at what i think are intersections you you have to become uh, okay with being uncomfortable. You have to embrace what I think is a beginner's mind. You have to be okay not being the smartest person in the room. You have to be the most curious person in the room, right? Um, so it's someone that can kind of do that. Probably someone that has a little bit of tenacity, a little bit of grit that can live in this messy middle between things. Um, and then also someone that can sit in between things and try to imagine the connection between them, no matter how absurd, right? At least at first case. So that's that's where I would go with with Nexus Thinker as as far as me reading the first two chapters of the book. Yeah, the um, the reflex today in the face of increasing immediate challenges, and I think that applies again to every 
domain is to seek answers and solutions solutions in hyper specialization there will always be a place in the world for people who master one topic we need specialists to solve hyper specific problems but the path towards radically new insights to solve the massively complex problems we face can only come from the inverse the integration of seemingly disjointed domains and that was one of the standout quotes for me just because like you i think we both think about many many things and sometimes it, you feel that it's wrong almost to to think about different domains to take interest in science and art and or, or, and sport and music and film and to, to grab all these interesting sources that spike our curiosity but in fact that's what we need to to solve these complex problems both at work and in the wide in wider society absolutely agree i mean the, the couple things that i pulled out of these first two chapters chapter zero chapter one are, are this idea of interconnection and then interdependency right so these big problems are interconnected within each other and their their interdependencies meaning if you move the cog over here it's going to have cascading effects across multiple disciplines so like i used to work in uh the data center world which involved you know, the applications that ran computers, the networks that transport the information, the servers that hold the information and all of the procedures on the inside and outside of that. And we used to create, like when we're moving a, a facility, you have what we call swim lanes, right? right? And one swim lane is network, one storage, one's facilities, one's this and that. And an activity in this swim lane will have cascading effects on the other swim lanes, right? So I think I think that is a big takeaway, the interdependency and what he called the difference between complicated things and complex things. So complicated thing, like he said, is like an airplane with all of these different pieces and individual pieces and parts. Complex systems are adaptive systems, right? So like if I'm a system and you're a system, we're both complicated <laughs> systems, but you influence my system in a certain way and I adapt. That makes me not complicated or makes me complicated but also complex in a way because i adapt so that's that's another takeaway that well, so thought. another thing with like the complicated where the, the an airplane there's a blueprint and it's very complicated and all these parts moving parts are all reliant on each other and if one part breaks the plane crashes but in a complex system if one part is taken out if one part is removed the system adapts the system changes the system doesn't even notice that thing because it's there's so many interconnected links going on that it's not well i would think about i would think about that maybe in a slightly different way i i still would call that system complicated and not complex because uh an aircraft air, aircraft system itself cannot adapt the system itself can't adapt the pilot can can go through different procedures to affect the system in a different way. I would call that a redundant system, right? So if you have, you know, uh, a certain uh, certain system that's on the plane, that if that breaks, the plane goes down. There's usually multiple redundancies, right, in that system. But the plane itself isn't intelligent enough to do that. The that has to have another force on top of that. So that's how I would think about that one. I like that. Um, don't get me scared of planes though, Jeremy. I've got to take one soon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one of the nice parts of the, the first couple of chapters for me, obviously like the book itself, they, they use the beginning to lay out what they're going to achieve. They lay out the, there's a lot of art. I mean, the book's about the convergence of art, technology and science. And the book itself is the convergence of storytelling in the written and the visual form. There's a lot of beautiful images. It starts with a, a bouquet of flowers floating through space. I mean, it's, it's got some the awesome pictures are images. brilliant. The imagery the is amazing are... and inspiring. And I think that was his that that was the goal. I think he remembers he said he wanted to use the imagery to inspire. Right. Yeah. Um, but that wasn't my, my my point. My interesting point I was going to take out of the, the first couple of chapters was the idea of solving challenges and problems with no definitive end. I mean, again, if you take climate change as the example, you can't visualize what the solution is to that. You can't visualize a solution. And a lot of the, the big problems of social injustice, like it's, there, you have to visualize a solution that isn't really possible. 
if that makes sense yeah it's 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 a com it's a it's complicated to to have the to figure out the solve for it right because you learn it along the way but I, I was I, I I lectured a class uh, years ago. It was called the New School in Atlanta, and you know a bunch of you know entrepreneurs, you know entrepreneurs kind of run the school, and it's this new mindset. It's actually a brilliant interpretation of what you know they're creating Nexus thinkers over there, I think. And one of the projects was this one this one student, female student, uh, decided to the, to imagine the future or to imagine solutions to the problems as she was writing future headlines of what the solution would look like. So like, think about like, what if there was no racism? Like talk about that. What if there was, you know, what if there was uh, no, um, you know, scary nature to technology? And like, she would write this headline and then the, she would brainstorm on the solution in the article, imagining the future as she wanted to see it. So I think there has to be a little bit of that imagination, um, willingness to be a little bit silly in what you think something could be willingness to be silly i like that um <laughs> i love being silly but yeah the willingness to be silly and to a lot of people talk about making mistakes but maybe it's not even about making mistakes it's about being ridiculous in fact being comfortable being ridiculous yeah it's it's it's, it's pattern breaking too because we're conditioned to 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 think this will work or this won't work no matter how open our minds are we're conditioned to a certain response respect to like not be able to think something is possible we have to fight through i have to fight through some of those you know some of those narratives but one one thing i thought in setting the stage of nexus thinking i think about this venn diagram of of you know science art and technology and like all of these things kind of cross pollinate and actually this little graphic that's above and below our pictures like that that le leads me to believe that we're actually in the nexus right now as we talk about this but um one thing that stood out is that, and I've thought about this a lot from a musician perspective, right? You know, I, I, I'm a musician, I write narrative, you do, you're a musician, you write narratives and all that kind of stuff. Creativity, no matter the discipline, has some inputs, it has a process and has some outputs, right? And largely that process looks pretty similar between art science and technology i think is what that is what he's setting the tone right now and then we can explore in other chapters but that was a big takeaway as i as i got the resonant frequency of where we are heading with this thing speaking of other chapters next chapters hopefully we'll have some people tuning in for the next chapter if you were a a marketer if you're working in pr if you're one of the people who are following thinking on paper why should they, or if you were them, why would you check out the Nexus? So I think if I'm, I, I'm going to answer that question by just my uh, digestion of chapter zero and chapter one, because I have, I have firm opinions on why people should just based on my experience in the world. But I think this, this provides a potential framework to, explore a means to do better um, as a business, as a society, as people to solve big problems, right? And, you know, big problems can, you know, range from, you know, trying to launch a new brand and figuring out how to connect with an audience in a meaningful way. But it also figure, you know, lines up to like, how do we set up a, a set up a, you know, a policy in the world to where, you know, people just can't kill other people because, you know, they don't like who they are, right? That's a massive problem. But I think everything, everything is applicable to this potential framework that we're looking at. So we'll see as it unravels, we'll see if that is the case. Yeah. But I, I believe that it might be. Yeah. And there are how many chapters are there? So there's uh, 10 or so chapters. For me, like, all of that I agree totally with that and obviously you've got to read more of the book as it unfold we'll get more info on it but one of the things that interests me is obviously solving the big problems but i don't have the the space at the moment to try to solve the the really big challenges that affect society i mean hopefully if thinking on paper keeps going i will be asked to come to some of these summits but i think that nexus thinking will help us solve the smaller day-to-day -day 
problems as well and think about those in a more logical interdisciplinary way i mean just for me okay i, I do a lot of fiction writing and just by taking perhaps fiction from other domains that i wouldn't normally familiar with. more read more horror read more science fiction read more i don't know like jane eyre or something maybe even it applies there it applies on james everywhere. baldwin read james baldwin i'm gonna have a t-shirt that says read james baldwin everyone should do that by the is way is he a baldwin like <laughs> no 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 he's a he, like the episode he, of the simpsons when everyone's a baldwin no he is a yeah he's an amazing uh brilliant writer and thinker and activist uh from like the the 60s i think he was around doing his thing um whole well, nother topic i could do three yeah. hours on james baldwin right then well let's not do that yep. book club thank you for joining us we'll see you next week tell a friend too if you enjoyed this uh get him to thinking on paper get him to sign up get him to receive these wonderful uh wonderful snippets of books and such thanks for joining disruptors and curious minds see you for chapter two see you for chapter two